Hey guys, Tech Rally here and welcome to the seventh lesson of Learning View. The previous lesson we learned about the differences between computed and methods. For this lesson, we will talk about making API endpoint requests using View. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the GET request. Let's look at an example. We're going to be using the same structure as we've done before, but I actually want to include one more um, CDN to help facilitate the API endpoint request. And the library that I like to use is called Axios. So if we look at the documentation here, um, I'll also refer these links below. So you don't have to type exactly what I'm writing, but what I wanna do is copy this link right here. And then I'll add a script tag here. And we'll source it up. And what this does now is it gives us access to the Axios library. Awesome. Before I start on this exercise, I'm going to make a safe assumption that you know how API endpoint requests work. The specific endpoint that we want to use is going to be provided by this website here called the JSON placeholder um, dot type it code dot com. And what we're going to be using is just like a dummy endpoint request where it'll give us good get responses and post responses and uh, make this exercise a little bit easier to understand. And what I'm looking at specifically will be this user's endpoint here. And what it looks like is that it's going to be giving me an array of users with ID, name, username, etc. But what I'll be mostly focused on is just the ID and name. So let's just copy this endpoint and then we'll just save it into our app.js here just as a reference. Cool. So what we're trying to build is a web page with a button on it that says something like fetch users. And when the, when the user actually clicks on fetch users, it makes an endpoint request to the fake API that currently exists and then returns the user's list. And what we want to show to the user is its ID and name. Um, how do we go about approaching this problem? Well, first, let's just go into the index.html and maybe create a basic structure layout and then connect it to our view instance. So in our index.html, let's create something like a class equals users. And then here we can add a button. And on this button, we could call something like fetch users. And another div container below it. And we could do something like a UL here and then li and just for display purposes i'll just say like user id one and then alex and then li user id two brian so if we run the if we run the code here it'll be something like this this is kind of what we're trying to achieve but obviously this is just hard coded values and we need to do a better way of making the endpoint request, getting the data, and then rendering that data. So let's go back to our app.js here and create a new view instance. And we could do that by doing something like this. New view, and then element here, and we say app view. Awesome. And then like previously before, we're gonna have a data object, a function I mean. And then we're going to return a list or an object of data variables that we want to use. And in this case, since we want to return an array of users, I think it would be really good to initialize it as an empty array. Cool. And then if we look at our code right now, this button isn't really doing anything. So we need to attach a V on directive to it with a click handler. And when the user clicks that, we want to call a method function to make that Axios API endpoint request. So what we can do is actually go back to our app.js and create a method to, uh, to make that request. So let's do methods. And then we'll call something like fetch users function here. Awesome. And then here we could use axios.get and then we could use this uh, endpoint request. And if you're unfamiliar with Axios, um, I'll provide a link below to the GitHub documentation. It's pretty straightforward, but if you ever have any questions or anything, just leave a comment below and I'll try to answer it to the best of my knowledge.
And then here, what axios.get does is it returns a promise. So in that promise, we get a response. And let's see how the response comes back in. So we could do a console.log of the response here. Cool. And we need to actually go back to our index.html and attach the v on click directive to fetch users. So if we go back to here and we have this button here, we could do an add click and then we could reference to our method function fetch users. And if we go back to our browser, um, it'll still have the same uh, hard-coded layout, but we also provided some functionality to this button. So let's see what happens. Cool. And if you look at the network requests, it should have this endpoint request right here. So what this is doing is it's returning an array of users. All right, so basically the response looks like it comes in an object here. And then what we're actually looking for is response.data here. And in the data, there's an ID, name, phone number, and username. So I think what would be a good way to save this data in the view instance would be to save the response.data variable to our empty array. So let's go back to our code right here where we console log the response. And then we could actually reference to a date. We can define a variable called data here and then set it to response.data, which would be an array of objects like this. And then we want to set this.users equal to data. Now that we know that the users variable is an array of objects, we need to somehow render that information to the browser. Right now, it's, we're using some hard-coded information, but like previously before, we could use the v4 directive to loop over the user's array and render the proper information as needed. So instead of using some hard-coded values here, let's just do an li here. And then we could do a v4 equals the string of user in users. And remember that user in this case is not just an element in the array, but an object. So users the user object will have a name and, and the user object will have an ID. So if we want to just render the ID and name, then we could do something like this. User dot name. And then we could just do something like, we'll, we'll just add the ID in the front. User, user dot um, ID would be good. And now if we look at the data here, nothing shows up because initially it's an array, empty array. And then when we call fetch users, it'll give us some nice information here. So it makes the API request, it gives it back, to, it gives that data back to our view instance. And then we set that data information back to our users variable. Uh, we could add some really nice little bit of like UI feedback by adding another variable called like something like loading. So imagine, it, imagine if you have really bad internet connection and you're trying to make this endpoint request and it's just taking a really, really long time. Um, essentially what happens, and we can take a look at an example here. So if I go to my networks here, networks tabs, and then set this to maybe something like, well, let's just refresh the page first. And then say I do something like slow 3G, right? And then I call fetch users. It doesn't really tell, even though the data does eventually show up, it doesn't really let the user know like, hey, what's going on? Uh, why isn't my information showing up right away? It would be good to let the user know like, hey, um, I know you made this request, but let me give you some feedback letting you know that, hey, this is still kind of loading, right? So if we go back to our code here, we can add a, another variable called loading here. And what this will be initialized as false because right now we're not actually fetching any data when the page loads. And what we can do is before the user makes the API endpoint request, we could set the value of loading as true. And then when the request is finished and the user are set, we could set the, we could also set the loading variable as false again. And how would we show that feedback to the user via index.html? Well, like our previous lessons before, we had a vif directive, and we could actually apply it right here. So 
Um, let's do something along the lines of like an h4. And then we could say v if loading, then we could, ren we could render the word loading to the user. So what this is saying is if the loading variable is set to true, then show this text and let the user know that, hey, I'm loading some information, just wait a little bit and then it'll show up. So if we do it here with a slow connection, it'll be loading, 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 and then it shows the data. It'll be loading, 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 and then it shows the data. Obviously, it's a little bit weird right now because the data is already set and it doesn't reinitialize. So if we want to give back even better feedback, we could actually set um, the app.js here before we make the endpoint request to set it back to an empty array. But it's not a requirement, but I think it will look a little bit better. So if we go back to our code and refresh the page, we could do this, loading, 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 and then it renders the information. Then loading, 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 renders the information. Cool. The last thing I want to do is just copy and paste some predefined CSS stylings that I did before. And if you need to look at that code as well, it's going to be in the GitHub links below. So if I save that, and then here, cool. Um, something is a little wrong. I realized what I did wrong was that I have my CSS all under the class of users. So what I'm going to do is move this content here inside of my users container. And if I do that, cool. And now if I call fetch users, it's gonna say loading, 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 and then it'll show the data as needed. Sweet. We were able to accomplish making a get request via Axios and JSON placeholder. We used the view directives to hook our method functions to make the proper endpoint request, save the data in the view instance, and render that data. If you have any questions about this lesson, please let me know in the comments below. The next lesson will be piggybacking off of this one and show you how to make a post request, specifically adding a user to this list.